Now, we've touched on this a little bit before, but this is the best way that I think you can learn a matchup, and that is watching replays. So if you're new to Guilty Gear or fighting games, whatever it may be, today I want to watch some replays with you, talk about what I'm looking for when I watch replays, and how we can use them as tools to think critically and draw information out to implement into our own games. But before we get into that, 71% of everybody here is not subscribed, so if you are enjoying this content and you are enjoying Guilty Gear Strive videos that I'm putting out, consider subscribing. It really does help me out, and let's get into today's video. This first replay we're going to take a look at is to kill sage versus kirby combo 35s potemkin versus giovanna and what i really want to focus on is locking down potemkin how the kill sage is able to lock him down and keep him in the corner majority of the game and sort of reset the pressure so you'll see here that's a i don't even think that was a me that was just delay crouch slash or uh close slash that is a conversion that i want to work on myself right so we see that he gets a counter hit off of the air dash uh jump heavy kick right and that is a like insanely good conversion because he got the close slash right which is like giovanna's best combo starter is close slash sometimes when i get that counter hit i'll do 5k because i'm not close enough but it seemed like he drifted far enough in and potemkin is large enough to where that combo worked very well that's like the presence of mind that I strive to have, right? The presence of mind to know that I could get a close slash there instead of just doing 5k on autopilot. That's what makes, I, I think that's what makes a, a great player great, right? And, and better than the rest is when you have the presence of mind to make those kind of optimal conversions. Red RC, it, uh, he whiffed the follow-up and he gets Potemkin. God damn, hold on. God damn, look at the damage. So much. I thought his risk uh, risk gauge was cranked there, but he wasn't. It was at zero, and he still took that much. You see a lot of sweeps coming out from the kill sage. Uh, I think it's very good against big body characters that you can't maybe close the distance on if they're pressing big buttons because her sweep is ridiculously far. Also, you can do dash into sweep and make it reach even further. And if you get a counter hit off of... If you get a counter hit off of the sliding dash or any dash, or uh, sorry, the dash into 2D or any counter hit off of 2D, you can do uh, dash 5K, close slash 2H into a 214K, and then you can extend it if you wanted. Um, but yeah, it, you can get some crazy conversions off of that sweep. It's very good. Lots of close slash, and you'll see reset. Sorry if I'm pausing a lot. But I'm trying to, you know, absorb the information and then, you know, regurgitate it to a way that I could teach you while still retaining the information myself, you know. I think a great way to test whether you really understand something is to try and teach it. But anyways, you'll see that the Kill Sage is using a lot of this spiral arrow move here to reset pressure. And the reason he's doing that and the reason he's able to is because this Potemkin player is not interrupting it. He's not, you can interrupt this, you can 6P this, right? Or you can, you know, hit the startup if she's doing it very close to you. But while she's in the air, you can 6P it. It's not easy. It's not easy to interrupt this while she's flying through the air. But it's possible. And if the Potemkin player knows that the kill stage is going to keep resetting pressure with it, uh, he, he should have tried at least. I don't know what Potemkin's options are there. Maybe he he doesn't have any options, and that's why. But um, my assumption is that he does, right? It feels like every character has some way to stop that, whether it's 6P or whatever. You'll see he's just doing it, right? That's why... He's able to stay in so long. He stays in until the end of the round, basically. He doesn't let up. And that kills. That kills because... Look at Potemkin's wrist gauge. The wrist gauge is right here. It's this tiny little bar that's turned red at this point. The higher this goes, if you don't know, if you're new to the game, the higher this goes, the more damage you take once you finally get hit. You're, you're being punished for just blocking. You see there, resets the risk, and then... So yeah, his risk actually wasn't very cranked, it doesn't look like, right? Because he got hit. Let's see where he got hit. He got hit with this... Oh, okay, yeah. His risk was cranked when he got hit with the spiral arrow, and then he took a shit ton of damage and got super. That That is why he died. I was wondering, because Potemkin has a decent amount of guts, right? He doesn't have the most in the game like you think he would. Uh, I think Angie actually has the most guts in the game. And again, if you're new, guts is just the system when the character has lower HP... Uh, they become a little harder to kill, right? They get more uh, armor, and they take a little bit less damage. Every character has guts. They just have different amounts of guts. Wow, round start. That's crazy. 
Yeah, I wonder if that's a that's a combo, huh? Wow, I didn't know that. So Stan heavy slash. That's a Giovanna's heavy slash. If you don't play Giovanna, three of her buttons are kicks, right? So kick slash heavy slash are all kicks, and then her punch is obviously a punch. So they all kind of look the same if you don't play her. Uh, as far as five K and five heavy slash look a little similar, but this is it's heavy slash, and then you get spiral arrow, far slash, another heavy slash, two one four K. I did not know that you can convert into spiral arrow off of that. And the reason I know it was a combo, again, if if you're new and you're watching this, you're trying to learn. See the the little combo counter right here. I'll point to it with the cursor. This turns like purple if it's not a true combo. So if what you're doing is not real, this will turn purple. But you'll see it's not. So what he did was was a real combo. Wow! With the Potemkin Buster, gets hit with a heavy slash. He's re you see he's resetting with Spiral Arrow a lot. He's doing that a lot because he's not being punished for it. So why would he stop? There, Potemkin finally interrupts it. And he only interrupts it because look how close this kill sage did it, right? He did it right next to him. So he caught the startup. He didn't catch him once he was in the uh, animation like we were talking about earlier. And then mixing up these cross-ups uh, is really good too. Wow. So... Here, I'll show you the frame data on this move right here. That The one that Potemkin tried to start up. Uh, let me pull it up for you real quick. So this is the move he tried to start up right here, Garuda Impact. And you'll see that it has 28 frames of startup and it's plus 19 on block. Usually, they will do like the little shoulder move and they'll cancel it into that. Let me see if I can show you the shoulder move. I think it's one of his like uh, command normals. Let's see if we can find it. this one right here, 6K. So a lot of people like to cancel 6K into Garuda Impact, but you'll see that that Potemkin we just watched did not cancel it. He tried to do the raw Garuda Impact and it got interrupted and counter hit. That's what happened there. So if you ever get, you know, if he does the cancel into this Garuda Impact, you have to hold that. It's plus 19. So you definitely don't want to press. All right, that's it. Let's get back into it. So he interrupted the Garuda Impact, right? You got a huge conversion off of it. And Potemkin's fighting back now. You can see he's out of the corner, uh, but not for long. <laughs> Red RC, DP. I think he could have got a close slash into uh, 2 and 4K, and it would have killed. Because the way Potemkin is falling after the uh, Red RC in the corner, he would have fell onto the uh, close slash. Another important thing to look for that I haven't really talked about yet is on round start, uh, looking at what you know the character that you're trying to study does on round start right so here he jumped back but some rounds you'll see giovanna players like to do sweep or maybe they like to do air dash into a button or something there's a lot of other things you can do right i remember watching i, I think it was left and learn grand blue and he said when he watches a replay he watches for things that happen every round right so every round there's two things that are going to happen for sure a round start and somebody's gonna get knocked down, right? So looking at what a person does off of round start and what a person does after they knock somebody down, if you have nothing else to base your replay analysis on, look at that first and then, you know, obviously rewatch it and look for what you're looking for afterwards. The counter hit off of, uh, you'll, you'll see, remember we were talking about earlier, how, how sometimes you don't get the close slash off of that counter hit. You'll see there, he didn't get it right. He did, wow, he did heavy slash. I didn't even realize that. I thought it was 5K. So heavy slash after the counter hit uh, air heavy slash. See, he's re resetting pressure with spiral arrow a lot again. And Potepkin is just not ready to react to it, unfortunately. Big heavy slash right there. Also, um, that little cross up that Giovanna does. You'll, you've probably been hit by it before. The the air dash, you know, 5K into uh, the little flip kick right here. That's, to me, that's like a really fucked up part about it, right? Is that you, not only does it cross you up and it hits a lot of the time, she can red RC it and then get even more damage. So definitely be keep that in the back of your head when you see them doing it a lot, you know? Be ready to block cross up. Or else, basically. Hammerfall, red RC. A lot of Potemkin's I play have been doing Hammerfall 
PRC if it whiffs into like uh, Potemkin Buster. So yeah, that's just a very quick example of some general things to look for when you're watching a replay. A lot of the times when you start to get a little better or you start advancing, you'll start going back and watching replays looking for very specific things, right? I talked about it a little bit at the beginning, but recently I went back and watched replays just to look for pressure, right? Just to look at pressure strings, how people are keeping them blocking or how they're keeping them in the corner. That's something that uh, is very important for the character that I play, so that's what I like to focus on when I watch replays sometimes. Other times I like to look at meaty setups or what buttons they're using to meaty. Whenever you start to understand your character more, you'll start to go back and watch replays based on what you want to see. You'll know what you want to watch before you start that replay. But when you're getting started, you just don't know anything, right? So you want to look for you know combos or you want to look for counter hit combos you want to look for neutral tools how they're playing neutral against certain characters things like that but anyways that's going to be it for me today i hope you enjoyed if you did consider subscribing and i'll talk to you again tomorrow